I had lots of notes from all my Blackberry <laughs> and lots of notes on scraps of paper and in a book. And I was really fortunate then to be able to bring in Sandra Bark, who actually knows how to write a book. And so a lot of what I wrote became connective tissue, it became philosophy, it became, you know, the ideas of the discipline and all these things. And then the bulk of the science of it all, we both kind of went in and did our research for it. We got the doctors and um, researchers and we spoke to a, a ton of, uh, you know, different people whom we really, um, you know, were, were actual experts in the fields that we were finding we needed to make sure that what we were talking about, because we really wanted to make sure that we address the mind and habit and not just make it about, that we wanted the science of that. We didn't want to just be like, stop doing this by doing this. Like, like how does the mind work around these things? We, especially women in our, in our society and our culture, we don't allow other women to age gracefully. We don't allow ourselves to age gracefully. And we feel like if, we are get, if we're not like we were when we were 25 years old, if we don't look the same, that we have failed in some way. Like we have not done our job by staying in a stagnant place. And I don't believe, I believe that I, there's not a day that I want to be the same as I was the day before. I always want to be changing and I always want to be getting older. I always want to be getting wiser. And those, that to me is a privilege. Aging is a privilege. Not everybody gets to do it. If you're not aging, the alternative, the only alternative to not aging is you're dead. So I don't really think that that's a great option. <laughs> so I want to help people reframe their mind and realize that as you get older, life actually does get better if you are participating in it, if you are moving forward in your life in a way that is you know, creating this vitality and capability and, and, and really engaging in it and not looking backwards at where you once were and trying to stay there. So in this philosophy and the philosophy of like abundance and being able to have more than you think you're, you know, that it takes more to be healthy than it does um, to not be healthy. And that when you're doing the things that you think that it takes to become healthy, like moving your body or eating a certain way, that, that you're actually giving yourself more. Like you're not just, you become happier, you become more capable, more vital, more, you know, your experience in life completely changes. Find what it is in your life that you feel like you can say, I'm giving to myself by doing this. Whether it's just running out on the lawn with your dog and like rolling down a hill and screaming and laughing, or if it's going for a run or going for a walk, whatever it is, or doing just push-ups on your counter in between while you're waiting your coffee to brew. Like whatever it is that you can find that makes you feel like you're giving to yourself because that's truly what you're doing. You're not taking away from yourself when you move your body and you're not taking away from yourself when you're giving it the proper nutrients and nutrition. It's really about abundancy and about giving to yourself. So for instance, Iggy, come here. This is, this is, I haven't actually got my dog on board with this because he has a habit of chewing on his bully sticks. And so to drive him away from thinking that that's not a good thing, that it's better for him to come and join me for a petting and a cuddle, sometimes is a little bit of a challenge. But he's gonna, I'm working on him. I'm really working. Iggy, come. Come on, Bubba's. Come here, bring it with you. Come here, come on. <laughs> come on. Oh, oh. <laughs>